This is part 11 of JavaScript with ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to include a JavaScript calendar date picker on an ASP.NET page. On most of the websites, you might have seen a calendar like this. On that page, if you have date-related fields like date of birth or higher date, and when you click in the respective text box control, a calendar pops up and when you select a date from the calendar, the selected date will be populated within the text box control and the calendar disappears. That's generally a JavaScript calendar. So let's see how to include this JavaScript calendar on an ASP.NET page. There are several free JavaScript calendars available on the internet. Pick a day is one of them. Here is the URL to download the required CSS and JavaScript files. I'll have this link available on my blog in case you need it. So once you navigate to that URL, on the right hand side you'll find a button which says download zip. Click that button to download the zipped folder. I've already downloaded the folder and extracted its contents. Within the downloaded folder you should see a folder with name CSS and that contains the required CSS files. We need all these three CSS files. So I'm going to copy this folder. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. I'm going to right click on the project name in Solution Explorer and paste the folder that we have just copied. So the folder and all the three CSS files are present in our project now. We also need a JavaScript file. So this pkday.js file, copy that and let's paste that within our project. So we have got one JS file and three CSS files. This JS file contains the required JavaScript for our calendar. So we need to add references to these four files on this page. So let's select all of them and drag and drop them into the head section. And we need a text box control as well. So let's drag and drop a text box control. So when we click inside this uh, text box control, that's when we want to display that calendar. Finally, we need to write some JavaScript. And here is that JavaScript. So basically, we are using Picade constructor function. And this JavaScript constructor function is present in this JS file, Picade.js. And if you look at this constructor function, we have a lot of configuration specified here. Now, what does these different fields mean? That information is available on this page. So if you scroll down, you should find a section which says configuration. And here we have the list of fields and what they mean. So if you look at this field, this specifies the control for which we want to display this calendar. So when we click within this text box one control, that's when we want to display this calendar. So we are finding that using document.getElementById and setting that as the field. This first day field here specifies what should be the first day of the week. Zero for Sunday, one for Monday, two for Tuesday, etc. Since we have specified one as the value for first day field, Monday is the first week within the calendar. And what is the minimum date that you want to show within the calendar? what is the maximum date that you want to show within the calendar, and then the range of uh, the year range, basically. So within this calendar, we only want to show from 2000 to 2020. And how many months you want to display within the calendar? Now, notice that we have specified a number of months as one, so only one month is displayed within the calendar. Okay? And the theme obviously specifies what theme you want for the calendar. So if you look at this theme.css, file so there is a theme with name dark theme so you can use that theme if you want to all right so to speed things up i have already typed all that required javascript so i'm going to copy that and paste it within our form so now let's go ahead and run this when the web form loads you know, we'll have the text box control, and once we click within the text box control, look at that, the calendar shows up. And once we select a date from the calendar, the date is displayed within the text box, and the calendar disappears. Okay? And if you look at this, it has got, you know, the background of this calendar is black, but if you want a dark theme like this, then use theme. So at the moment, we don't have theme here, so let's specify theme colon 
doc hyphen theme. Let's save the changes, reload the page, and look at this when we click the theme of the calendar changes. And if you look at this, there's only one month displayed within the calendar, but if you want to display two months instead of one month, then for this number of months field, specify two. And when we reload this, and when we click within the text box control, look at that, March and April are displayed. Okay, and if you specify that as three, then three months will be displayed. Look at this, March, April, and May. So if you want to know all the other fields, uh, you know, just read this documentation. There are loads of them, and you have a lot of options to customize the look and feel of this calendar. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.